The back portion of the garden, of the older uh, garden section, has is basically lined by a narrow vertical grow bed. I don't have much growing up the vertical actually this year because I lost almost all the pole beans that were um, planted up here. I've had multiple starts at it and um, there's just hardly anything growing as far as the beans are concerned. And what is growing is really late. But what is doing good in here is the front section was planted with our parsnips. And you can see that the foliage is growing nicely. I have not tested yet to see what kind of um, roots are developing, but based on the foliage growth, I think we'll have a, a good harvest of parsnips this year. Behind them is some dried pinto beans, um, which is a half runner bean. And I've got a few going, but there's no seed or pod production yet. Uh, highly unlikely that's gonna do anything this year. And then further on down, I do have some pole beans, um, what's left of them. And we just lost a lot to uh, pest damage. And in addition to that, my husband let the chickens into the, the garden for just a brief period of time and they scratched up a few plants. So uh, there you are, we ended up with hardly any pole beans. Thankfully, the bush beans are doing great and we won't be without beans, just not as much as we would like. There's a couple uh, carrots left in this bed. I'm hoping that they're actually, they look okay, and hopefully they're surviving uh, the carrot fly infestation we had elsewhere in the garden. Um, I don't know. I'm just not going to cover them at this stage, so we'll take our chances. And then I have a couple cabbages that I tucked in here. Um, these are basically for fall usage and just trying to make use of the space since a lot of it was empty. I've got another bed that's uh, close to the vertical grow bed that has uh, some fall spinach that I've planted. They're coming along pretty nicely. And this is one of two beds of fall spinach I've planted. This is the first one, so it's a little further along. Next to it is the um, strawberry patch. This is a young, new patch that I started this spring. Um, it was doing great, and then I had a bunny rabbit who came through and just gnawed it down completely to the ground. It's bounced back, as you can see and I think it's going to continue on to be a good patch. It's just that we didn't get hardly any strawberry harvest this year because of our bunny problem. Okay, Nick, going down the center bed, this is another really long bed, um, about 32 feet long, in fact, and it's got a variety of things in it. First up is uh, the Swiss chard, which looks pretty um, hacked up. <laughs> That's because we've been harvesting it, and I, I harvested pretty hard just last weekend. Um, there are actually some new... Let's see if I can show it to you. New little seedlings of Swiss chard that I've tucked in there that will also um, grow out and be part of our fall crop. Uh, this bed, as you notice, is being covered in netting. That's in preparation for the fact that this bed will be a fall crop bed and will need to be protected from the hens when we let them back into the garden over the winter. In addition, I've got um, this section here planted up in spinach, and you really can't see it, but they are emerging. Um, the uh, new seed beds are just really tempting for cats, mine included, uh, to go to the bathroom in. And so rather than have them dig up my seedlings, I just prefer to go ahead and cover it. Um, this next section has corn salad um, and some lettuces. And in fact, you can see the lettuces, I think, that are emerged and coming up. And they're just emerging. And then some more Swiss chard that's, again, looking pretty uh, chopped up. Now you notice that this bed has um, a layer of vermiculite on it. This actually is because I did a, um, a wide row uh, broadcast seeding and then used some potting soil that I had on hand to do the top layer. Um, I've shown that on my how-to section. Uh, this particular potting soil that I used was a germinating mix. It had a lot of vermiculite in it. And um, it's just some extra I had left over that was otherwise going to go into the compost pile. And it makes a great seed cover. Uh, in this case, though, all the vermiculite came up to the surface when I watered. So I've got a nice bright white um, vermiculite seed bed. Anyway, that's why it looks like that. But this is a nice way to start a big section of garden um, relatively quickly. Moving on down this bed, um, we've got a big patch of potatoes, which are actually volunteers. This was last year's potato patch. These kept coming up and I got tired of fighting with them, so I just decided to let them go. Um, the onions that were originally in this area did terrible, so I just pulled up the onions um, earlier this summer and let these potatoes go to town. 
hopefully they'll add to my mix and I'll get uh, some good use out of that space. They were determined to grow and I just uh, didn't have the heart to keep fighting them. Okay, going down this section, I've got a whole bunch of new seedlings that I transplanted out oh, about a week and a half ago. Um, maybe it's closer. Yeah, no, it's about a week ago. Uh, this has some kale and some uh, savoy cabbages, um, alcosa, and I've got some arctic winter uh, lettuce, which is kind of a buttercrunch type lettuce, and a little bit of pak choy over here. Now you notice that this particular planting has copper collars around them. I use those to help with fighting off slug infestations. and. Um, when I'm seeing a lot of slugs in the garden, when I'm putting out transplants, I will put them around the plants. It's one way to keep the plants protected. Um, what's lovely about these is they're completely reusable. Every year you just drag them out, give them a quick cleaning, you know, a little steel wool if they're too dirty, um, but otherwise just to wipe down and they're good to go. So it's a very reusable and sustainable way of managing slugs, which in my area is a big problem. The last section in this bed uh, is covered with a uh, Rime grow cover. Um, there is, and I'm just not going to bother to pull back the, the um, cover at this point, but the underneath here are some more beets, some fall mixed variety, and a section of carrots, and they're the reason why the, the cover is on. I had problems with carrot fly infestation this year, and um, they're usually out and about in August, and so I didn't want those new emerged seedlings to get infested. Um, I've already lost quite a bit of my carrot crop this year to the infestation, so trying to stop them in their tracks, and this is the only way you can really do that organically. The next bed I'm going to show you is the squash patch, and actually in, mixed in with it is dill. This was growing here before the pumpkins started running, and of course the pumpkins take over everything, which is normal. Um, dill's holding its own, it's just kind of fighting to uh, keep its head above the uh, squash waters. Um, we've got butternut and towards the back there is the uh, sugar pie pumpkins which are moving forward with the runners and then I've got zucchini in the back section there. Everything is so late this year because of our cool summer. The zucchini is just now starting to produce and it's late August um, which is I think a first for my experience. And the pumpkins are just now really setting pumpkin fruit. And sadly, while the butternut appears healthy and is really running along here, um, it has yet to flower and has set no fruit. There's a very slim possibility since it's getting ready to flower that I might get something, but um, the odds are extremely uh, high against that happening. It's so healthy though, I just and I have no use for the bed at the moment besides what it's currently being used for, so I'm just going to leave them alone and see if maybe I can... Uh, luck out and get a really warm fall and get some butternuts despite this. So that's the squash patch. It's looking good, just 